Hello and welcome to Tactically Sound. This is the Yeti Den and I'm joined with Jumbi Jumbwa to talk about Shattered Space and Starfield's unique leveling system. And the first question we're going to jump into is what quest lines should you experience before playing Starfield? So Matt and I want to talk about the DLCs and, and how they intertwine with leveling up and the player's approach to questing. Starfield's first expansion is out and it's recommended that players start the DLC at level 35. So since Matt is a newer player to Starfield, it made me think, what are the essential quests to play before jumping into Shattered Space? So Matt, are you ready for this list? Dude, I am so ready. Give me that, those <laughs> hints, those level up hints. <laughs> All right, so these are my own personal hints. I'm sure there's a better guide online. This is what I found to be useful. And Matt, what I think you should check out personally is Andreja's side quest. Make sure she's a companion. Uh, do the UC Vanguard for the lore that it teaches you and the piloting skills. Uh, you also could kind of farm XP through that. And then the Crimson Fleet for more combat, more mm. persuasion. And finally, I just finished this one personally right before jumping in, but the Free Star Rangers, because there's some really intense ship battles that force you to uh, test your your skills. So um, yeah, Matt, tell me which of the two you've started as a new uh, Starfield player playing on PC. Of course, you got to start with Constellation. You know, you got to go through all the motions with that. It's it's kind of the tutorial, right, to get us going. But then also with that, I you run into the United Colonies van Vanguard, right? Vanguard, Vanguard, whatever. <laughs> Anyways, I'm role playing as like this military s guy, and that totally seemed like the right fit. So immediately, I was like, hold on, uh, I think it's Sarah. Hold on, Constellation, Sarah. We're, we're gonna we're gonna uh, go enlist right now into this become a citizen um but what a, uh, what a friend i know i know well well she <laughs> she <laughs> she was like hey we don't we don't want to do this just yet and i was like uh-uh uh, we're enlisting and the and the commander was like all right go downstairs and and, and go through our museum for another hour <laughs> it was Not actually only does pretty she interesting uh it was a lot more surprising I, I sat through it all. I realized that you, you could skip it all, but I'm like, no, I need to... Big part of Bethesda games is the world building. So how to sit through it. Yeah, not only did she have to join the military against her wishes, but she also had to go to a museum about the military <laughs> and sit through it with you. Like, yeah. what a companion. <laughs> and she made great commentaries about it and gave me some personal insights. It was actually pretty interesting, so... Did you, yeah, did you go through that too, or did you skip it? I went through it, and I went through it late. I wish I went through it earlier okay. uh, because it is so helpful. Yes. Um, but yeah, you you had a question about Starfield and how, how it relates to Skyrim. When I was initially you know, starting with Constellation, then I had my second one, Vanguard. I'm like, oh my goodness, Like, I've started the main quest. I've now joined like the Skyrim companions, if you will. That's what I felt. And uh, now I'm wondering, uh, especially walking through this museum, like there's so much history with with war, the Free Star Collective versus U United Colonies, the colony wars. And now am I if I'm joining Van Vanguard with this history, is it going to be weird if I also joined the Free Star Collective? Spencer, am I only limited to uh, certain factions in this game or is it like I'm the Dragonborn all over again and I could join every any faction i want to, with no consequences it feels like the second one honestly i've done most of the main quests and i don't think i've really been prevented there's a little flavor that you could use okay. where you know you'll get an option to answer a question as a lone star ranger or you know something to do with your background but right. yeah it doesn't really have too much consequence unfortunately my critique is that it's one of those uh games where the quest design will almost encourage you to ask every single question that's listed in a conversation as uh. opposed to like the obsidian branching paths. So you'll ask a question and then the next prompt will just be, okay, you could ask the next four that have already been here instead of going deeper. So right. I think it's shallow in that regard as opposed uh, as when in regards to like quest design, it I doesn't, see. it doesn't go, oh, I'm going to answer as a Lone Star Ranger. Now this is going to close off all of these things. And now right. all these branching paths are being closed. It's, it's kind of set up in a similar way where I have a feeling our interactions with people are going to be right. pretty similar. 
So now, what really um, gave me the concern though was when I was joining the Vanguard, they did warn me that you needed zero bounties, right? Mm. And so that made me think, what if I was part of another faction where I mm. may be like Dark Brotherhood, like maybe I might get a bounty on me, right? Um, uh, I, I would have to clear that before joining this one. So maybe that's like what you're talking about, the minor obstacles to joining different factions, the flavor that you're talking about. Yet still, they're not so huge where in a single playthrough, I wouldn't be able to tackle all the faction stories. I definitely could imagine the Crimson Fleet doing that if you went super hard into the mm. Crimson Fleet. Like if you really dedicated yourself to their cause, I could see how you could run into problems as you mentioned that. So maybe it depends on how far you commit to okay. your role play and maybe that will have a little bit of influence, you know, like yeah, a typical Bethesda game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, let's talk about balancing the desire to experience a DLC without wanting to farm XP. So, uh, Matt, you have some issues with the challenge system. Tell me about it. Right. So this is the one big difference. I mean, every Bethesda game has a little slight difference with the leveling system. But um, I, while I thought it was pretty big between Oblivion and Skyrim, that actually feels a lot more close uh, together and, and similar. Um, this challenge system uh, feels even completely different than, uh, what is it, the game? Fallout, you know? And uh, I feel like that would be its uh, cousin. Um, and uh, I, you know how we were talking about how it's interesting how Skyrim for so many players in its own way with just the the enemies and the environments into a stealth archer maybe even that that uh skill uh, uh difficulty played into that well i feel like this is in a sort of way not necessarily forcing me but guiding me into a specific type of gameplay and it comes out with the challenge system right where where like as soon as you get a skill point you're gonna have to, it's telling you, put it in somewhere instead of racking them up, um, you know, whatever build you want, put them somewhere because, you know, when you are, say you're, you're making progress towards a challenge, you're not gonna actually make progress in the game unless you unlock that skill with that challenge. And so that that is kind of, uh, in a way it's frustrating, but I, I get it, I get what they're trying to do and, um, and it just is making me think like, wow, like I need to slow down and I need to actually do some research now and plan my build similar to um, other games. Like I do this with uh, MMOs. Um, I do this also with, uh, what's that game that came out? Diablo 4 last year. So like I just really planning out my build. And I'm not saying that I don't normally do that with Bethesda games, but normally on a on a first playthrough of a Bethesda tile, I'm not too stressed about how I'm leveling up. I'm enjoying and figuring out, but this one is making me have some sort of more of a serious approach and careful crafting approach, which definitely has its pros and cons. Um, now, I, I do have a couple questions I wanna ask you uh, in, in regards to this challenge system. Does it feel organic to you? No, it doesn't because <laughs> I was talking to my brother-in-law about this because he's level 75. Yeah. And so I was asking him, you know, like, is there a way to get to level 75 without, you know, over planning, over approaching all of this? And he was right. telling me, you know, get rested, get bounties, grind points of interest. You can go to Akilla, get like seven bounties at a time. So he's ironically not beaten the game yet. He's just kind of treating it like uh, border is it Borderlands and, and Diablo essentially like he's right. just going planet to planet wreaking havoc and leveling up <laughs> that way um, but yeah like you said you do have to strategize if you want to get these challenges and get these important perks like you need mm -hmm. if you want to mod your weapons if you want to target ships like there's all these really specific skills that you have to unlock so you could be yes. leveling up but not unlocking them because you didn't do the challenge meaning you didn't play the game the way that Bethesda is encouraging you to play, right? which feels less Bethesda-y for sure. So I don't know if they'll do this for the next Elder Scrolls, the next Fallout. I, I think uh, this is an experiment. Mm -hmm. I think this didn't work 
great. Um, yes. It is interesting. It's teaching you. It, it's it's homework, right? It's like right? it's, it's teaching you how to play this really complex game. And so maybe for the next Fallout, for the next Elder Scrolls, we'll have some of these skills and understanding. But right. I don't know. I, I don't know if they're going to start over, go back to Skyrim, go a little bit of a blend. I don't. I, I think they're trying to incorporate what you describe as this mining game. You're essentially. You know, you were looking on the internet and tell me about this this yes. whole strategy that players have developed. So uh, as I've been playing this game and, and now researching some realizing, wow, I got to really plan my build, um, you know, to fully max out your character, I think it's like level 300, something crazy. And like when you get past level 30, 40, the XP starts really slowing down in this game. Um, and that makes sense, you know, in, in Skyrim, it's, it's similar, but you know, we find ways to get XP really fast. And, uh, one of the ways that I found, uh, that is popular online, um, I, I, I forgot the name of this YouTuber. I wish I could drop his name, but he makes really good videos. It's one of the first one you see, but, uh, 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 he was showing us, uh, how to set up these outposts on you know, very, uh, 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 I guess, uh, iron ore rich, uh, uh, planets and, uh, setting up, uh, all your different structures that will mine the iron ore, then send, connect them and send them to the storages. And then eventually you're going to take all this iron ore and send it to another outpost that you've already made. And, and, and is, you're just mining a bunch of stuff so that you can start creating, um, more structures that are going to give you more XP and over time you're just going to be able to one make a lot of money but to also farm a ton of XP and it just started looking like I was playing in like one of those overhead RTS games um, but not as good as any of them like S Starcraft like Age of Empires Age of Mythology I would rather go play any of those games than uh this mining simulator <laughs> game in Starfield I mean it's cool that they have it but at the end of the day does it work does it work in this game and I feel like no you know what this kind of takes away from what Starfield is to me which is an action space adventure and so what do I want to do well I want to go explore and I want to uh, uh, defend myself in life and death situations, whatever that may be, combat or non-combative, right? Um, dialogue choices or taking out my, my, my sword and hacking uh, this creature to death, which leads me to the other way to level up, which I'm going to lean more towards, which is hunting and finding herds of animal creatures and uh uh kind of turning into my own space witcher if you will <laughs> Ooh, i like that oh yeah you like that <laughs> <laughs> space witcher is a good yeah. description of that play style i think that's a good idea and you know like we were we were asking ourselves you know when you first started playing this game was like starfield's lack of tutorialization affects the fun of leveling up so the question is like would this be a good RPG to introduce someone who's never played RPGs? Like, is this the first RPG they should play? Uh, no, <laughs> because <laughs> because there's um there's a lot in it that requires video game literacy. You're just gonna be the tutorialization of this game is difficult. It doesn't quite hold your hand as well as other games. Um, that will be a way more appropriate for a first time player, um, especially getting into the genre. And then also uh, the, the, the whole challenge system, again, it's just really complicated. Um, leveling should just happen as you play a game. And then you should have freedom to choose how the levels affect your character, right? This is making a new player go, oh, I'm leveling up. Okay, now which, where do I pour my skills into? okay i don't know how to get to the next tier uh, i either gotta unlock all of these or go through this challenge system and now i'm just logging on doing homework for challenges and now i'm losing my pacing in the story like it's a mess and so it works really well for a long-term bethesda player who has like 
dreamed like what about fallout in space right or what would bethesda game in space be like i think it it, it sells well on that gives you a nice uh, space simulator experience um and and th there's tons of pros to starfield you know this we're just kind of you know, don't think I'm bashing on this game. I don't hate Starfield, but in in terms of a new new player, a new person who has never played video games much, lacking in that video game literacy, no, this is not where you should start. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Well, thank you, Matt, for hopping on and talking Shattered Space and totally. this very unique Starfield leveling system. You know, we're both trying to wrap our heads around it. It kind of feels like we're in like AP bio or something and we have like our notepad and we have our computer and it's like you're, you're checking the notes, you know, doing the thing, checking the notes again. And it would be nice to not have to do that and to not have to build a full blown colony system. I describe it as like watching my friend do this, Nate, who's showing me. And I, I was like, it looks like you're running a Best Buy warehouse. Like you have <laughs> all of these shipping containers yes. and ships dropping off materials. And yes. it's like, I don't know if I want to be a, a manager of a warehouse right now. I like that Nate can do that, but I don't know if that's what I want to do. And if I'm going to mm -hmm. get, you know, stuck behind a quest or stuck behind a goal of mine because I'm not ready to run a shipping container management system. Yeah, then I'm not ready for that meta. I'm not ready for that. <laughs> right, right. And uh, before we go, one final note. If you have played Fallout 4, the Nuka World expansion does this where you want to finish the game and they're they kind of the DLC and they kind of promote like, what if you went and built a bunch of settlements? And you're like, <laughs> that is not how I want to finish out this main quest. Or they're like, <laughs> or fight a lot of bad dudes who are really powerful. So that kind of leveling with DLC is a frustration. I don't think right. it's as bad in Shattered Space. I've, I'm noticing that like, yeah, level 35, I feel good. We'll see if I could finish it out without having to build a mining facility. Mm. But um, mm. yeah, so let's leave it there. Matt, where can they follow you? And uh, yeah, tell us about your channel real quick. You could follow me on YouTube or Instagram at Jumby Jumbwa, J U M B Y J U M B W A. And I'm I'm very much into like Nintendo, but I'm also very much into PlayStation and PC. Um, I you know I grew up with all Lord of the Rings like a lot of you guys, and um, uh, we got to get that next generation into Lord of the Rings and. So, um, yeah, I'm hoping to, you know, keep things fun and entertaining with uh, the pop culture that we love and the video games that we love. We'll see you guys there. Awesome. And yeah, subscribe to the Yeti Dan and we will see you guys next time. Later. Bye. Yeah.